Okay, now we at the part of the story that I was waiting to get to. This is when another prison closed down and we got half of the inmates and another prison got half of the inmates. Now, who's very important in this story is this guy named Kerry and who they nicknamed the Beast because he's light years bigger than everybody in the prison. And he's a bully and he wanted to uh, create a posse. That was his motive to create a posse. So, you know, at this time, everybody's back in the tier except Laco and Baytown. Sleep late, lose weight. We go to child. We come back to the dorm. A transport coming in. Transport coming in. So we all out our cell and we all in groups because we all beefed out at this time. So we see about fifth in line. Now, all these guys is coming from the same prison. So most of these guys been in a prison with Kerry. Beast. So we see this guy about six, seven, and I'm talking about he bigger than Michael J. White. He just swole, so everybody just looking, probably with the look of stun on their face, looking at him, and he just got a mean mug on his face out this world. So everybody coming in, they getting their placement and stuff, and this guy walking by, shaking his head, looking at everybody in there. So once everybody get in, they go to their cell and get settled in or whatever, they waste no time. They come back out to the tier where everybody at. Now, most of these guys been in prison and they all nice sized guys, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, half of them just mingling to themselves. They're the ones that came in together. They talking to each other or whatever. And we all just talking about this big guy, Carrie, that then came in. So while we all still discussing him, we see him go walk up to one of the inmates he came in with. You gonna roll with me or what? Man, you know I'm down with you, bro. Now, this little dude looks scared as hell. Look like he can't even stand Carrie, but he's scared to tell him no. And I find out why he's scared to tell him no. Now, through the day, everybody just out they cell playing games, politicking, whatever they do, you know? And we see Kara just roaming about the prison like he's sizing inmates up, you know? So everybody kind of keep glancing at him, man, because the dude is huge, you know? So we all see him go up to Dino. Say, bro, I'm starting to live crew. You gonna roll with me or what? Say, dog, if you don't get out my face, man, I roll solo and sucker free, you heard me? Now, y'all remember, Dino is the boxer from Michigan, and he ain't taking no shit from Beast. So they just going backwards and forward, arguing and shit. What's up? What's up? <laughs> now, Beast throw these haymaker-ass licks that Dino dodges, but you can hear the wind when Beast swing. But Dino dodges them bitches and pop them twice. But it's like Beast ain't even feel that shit. Ooh. Beast throw an uppercut when I say he slid Dino for about a mile. You heard Dino face go, smile. And he slid Dino for about a mile. Dino sliding in sleep. Now the other little dude Dino always talking to and hanging with, he goes run to the door and bang for the guards because he see Dino in bad condition. We all can tell Dino jaw broke, blood coming out of his mouth, and Dino ain't moving. His homeboy beat for the guards. Boom, 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 boom. After about 15 fucking minutes, the guard finally come in. What the fuck going on in here? And nobody expect this, but this big stupid motherfucker beast Tells the guard, oh, he clumsy. He was running and he fell. Now the guard looks up at Beast, looks down at Dino, and drags Dino the fuck up out of there. He looked at Beast, and you could tell, he said, oh, I ain't about to fuck with this big motherfucker, and dragged Dino the fuck up out of there and locked us the fuck back in. Now, a lot of y'all know how it go in prison. When somebody see you knock out somebody who's a superb fighter, and then you, the first lick you hit him with, you KO'd him. Everybody you go up to saying yeah. So that's what he do. He keep going around from prisoner to prisoner this whole day. And if you say you ain't rolling with him, he knocking you the fuck out. But he mostly going after people he see ain't got no crews and standing by themselves. Now, you can hear the chatter starting to pick up in the prison. Everybody like, man, hey, bro, everybody better posse up because uh, this dude ain't playing, man. This dude going around bullying you niggas, man. Now, I'll be lying if I tell you we wasn't on there discussing the same thing. Like, hey, bro, we need to go talk to some of these dudes up in here, bro, because this dude trying to find a posse, and you could tell, man, he coming up in here to cause havoc. It's in his face. It's in his movements. It's everything about this dude. Look like he can't read or write. 
It just looked like he just plump ignorant. Now, as we walking around the prison, kind of sizing dudes up, looking like, yeah, he might be a cool dude to fuck with or whatever, because we ain't just trying to go pick out and grab any dudes we can grab. We need dudes with some size on them that look like they got some sense about themselves. So as we doing that, we see baby Charles and he walking towards us. Shit, I already know what kind of shit y'all on. Y'all can put us down. We gonna start rolling with y'all every day. Look like this bitch coming up in here to take whatever the fuck he want. Fucking right. So after we finish talking to baby Charles or whatever, we go roll up to these two homeboys that's talking to each other. You know, that look like pretty cool dudes. And they name was Desmond and Trey. So we go up to Desmond and Trey, man. What's happening with y'all, man? Y'all was locked up with Beast? Yeah, man. This nigga was knocking niggas out in that bitch, man. He had a big posse in that bitch, but most of them went to uh, another prison. You know what I'm saying? He came here straight from the fucking hole. He said, man, this dude will knock you out, stab you, and fuck you. So we just standing there like, what the fuck? And he goes on and on, giving us the rundown of how Beast operate and the little things that he do. And we know we got a problem with this dude here. So Desmond and Trey end up being down with us. Then they tell us, hey, man, you might want to go over there and holler at uh, Dunn and Frito. So Dunn and Frito, these two dudes that Beast had beat up in the last prison. So we go holler at them and they terrify the Beast. Man, bro, we're going to have to think about this shit, bro. I ain't lying. I ain't trying to cross dude, bro. He done kind of took his mind off us, bro. So both of these cats kind of go around and around, and we see right there they ain't even getting down with the plan because they this man had beat them the fuck up, and they don't want no part of nothing. So as we continue on our walk, we see a dude coming straight at us. We don't know if he coming at us or he cutting through us. So when he get close to us, he end up dapping down Dunn and Trey. And then he looks at us and say, man, I already see what y'all doing, bro. Man, y'all can put me down, man. Me and Beast didn't have problems in the past. Now, nah, this dude, Honore, this dude, Honore is a nice size. He ain't near about as big as Beast, but he got a nice size on him. And him and Beast didn't have a fight. And how I hear, Beast still knocked him out. But he was the one who really got with Beast. As we talking to Honore, we see Beast walk up to Kiefer. And they just talking. All you see is their hands moving, doing shit like that. Then, out of nowhere, you see Beast hit this man. Yeah. Then he drags Kiefer in Kiefer's own cell and fuck that man. I mean, bro, this shit on his first day in the prison. Now, you can tell he got everybody in this bitch terrified because nobody gets up to go see what's going on. All you hear is Kiefer hollering in that motherfucker. Bitch, stop moving for I kill your ass up in here. That's what Beast telling this man and punching him at the same time. You can hear the licks. So about an hour and something go by and then you see him and Kiefer come out the cell. Bitch, I want you to stay close to me every day, all day. Now Jabori and Kiefer had got cool as a motherfucker, but Jabori stood on the outside of that cell and heard his homeboy just get turned the fuck out with the look of fear and like he was paralyzed. But nobody couldn't blame Jabora because shit, I know Beast would have just slaughtered Jabora too. So for the rest of that day, Beast just kind of walking around a tear dominating shit. And this how bad that shit was. We seen Broomfield and Monroe go in they cell and they come back out to the tear none that day. Sleep late, lose weight. We go to child, we go to workforce. So when we get the workforce, we ain't in workforce a good 40 minutes before we see Sergeant Larry comes into detail and carpool. And he's looking around, looking around, until he spot this dude, Nathaniel, that we call Nate. Bring your ass here. So after he takes Nate out of there, we trying to time how long it takes them to get into shop. So we just standing there waiting. And then we all bust out on the hallway. But when we bust out on the hallway, see your buddy on the hallway. So we make a you and goes right back up in there like we was doing something else. So we all hurry up and go back to work because we think it's your buddy going to come in there because he seen all of us hit the, uh, the hallway. But he never comes in there. So all we hear is the shop door close again. And then we go peek out on the hall and we see CO Buddy then went in the room too. Now about seven of us hurry up and run out the uh, carpool and heads up to the shop. 
We get up to shop and the first thing we see, oh, you the advice man, huh? Hold that bitch, motherfucker. Tell somebody else. Now, this time, we see CO Buddy starting to put back on his jacket. So we all haul ass to carpool. But we still peeking out of carpool door. And we see CO Buddy leaves out the room. Now, we walks over the detail and we discussing among ourselves because we know this the same dude, Nate, that told TJ to go tell the counselor. We know what he getting his ass beat for. So after a while of discussing that, we go check and see, and we see CO Buddy. But CO Buddy gone, so we go run back up to the shop, and we peeping in the shop. <sighs> I'm gonna get you again. Sergeant Larry in there fucking the shit out of Nate. So... We all go run back to carpool, and we get to talking. Man, hey, bro, this don't look good for TJ. The only way Sergeant Larry could have known that Nate advised TJ to tell a counselor is if the counselor told Sergeant Larry, TJ told on him, and Sergeant Larry went approach TJ, and TJ say, man, Nate told me to do this. So showing shit stank. Nate comes back in the room with tears in his eyes, mumbling, I'm gonna fuck TJ up. I'm gonna fuck that boy up. So everybody back working like they ain't too much paying no attention to Nate, but Nate go sits in the corner on a bucket and he just going on and on how he gonna fuck TJ up. Then all of a sudden, over a motherfucking tool, Mel and Tim breaks out in the argument. I had this tool first, old bitch-ass boy. I ain't gonna be too many more of your bitches, nigga. Boy, everybody in here know Sergeant Larry fuck you, boy. I seen Sergeant Larry go up in you, boy. What? Tim and Mel just rumbling. Tim feel played because of what Mel said, and Mel was down bad for telling that man we seen Sergeant Larry fuck him. Tim losing his mind. They doing mostly wrestling. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no good fight. You know what I'm saying? But they wrestling and throwing a couple licks. So everybody kind of break it up because they kind of pissed off that Mel even did that type of shit. Now, he said what was on his mind when they got into an argument, so can't nobody really fuck over him for doing that, but he was down bad for even bringing that shit up. So we broke up the fight between them, and Laco and Doc come run back in the room. They was gonna use the bathroom and say, man, come look, come look. Sergeant Larry just took TJ in the room. So we all break and run up to the shop, and we see Sergeant Larry going in on TJ. You must think I'm something to motherfucking play with, huh? Now, at this time, we all then played it off and started walking back to carpool because we see two inmates with another guard coming to the shop. Now, we still peeping out carpool dough to see when the inmates and the guards get out of sight. But we see this same guard and these two inmates go in the shop. So we hear the door close, and now we really anxious to see what this shit all about. So we all run back up to the shop, and we peeping in the door, but we really cross down low, and we peeping at the bottom part of the window. Stomp his ass. Uh, come on. Yeah. Boom. boom. I want y'all to beat his ass until I say stop. Uh. <laughs> Sergeant Larry got these two big swole ass inmates end up beating the fuck out of TJ. And anybody that told on Sergeant Larry, this how he was operating. So ain't no united front in this prison. You got inmates that's doing his dirty work and shit. And in this prison, you see a lot of these inmates catch other fucking inmates and beat them for Sergeant Larry. Not just in the shop, all over the fucking prison. So everybody scurry their ass all the way back to carpool, and they talking, man, see, this the shit I'm talking about, bro. They helping this motherfucker get away with all this shit. Because a lot of motherfuckers in prison are just ignorant and think they gonna get favors from Sergeant Larry if they do his dirty work. Now, if everybody was on the same mind in the same time, Sergeant Larry will be put down like a rabbit fucking dog. But we can't come together at all. It's so many different minds doing different shit in this prison, and it's about to get a lot worse. Wrap it up! So we catch that ride back to the tier. When we get in there, we see this motherfucking beast had them recruited about 15 motherfucking people. He deep as a motherfucker in just that short period of time we was at workforce. And poor little Kiefer, he just walking around like this with his head down right on side of Beast. So as soon as we get in this bitch, everybody say, man, let's go gather our shit and go hit the shower. We all moving together. 
We gather our shit, we hit the showers, and we come back out. So as we come out the shower, Honoré makes his way to us, him and Baby Charles. And they get to telling us, man, that dude been bending niggas back in this bitch since y'all been gone. Now, at this time, the whole Queen team is sitting on the middle bench. And we see Beast go walk up to them. Say, I'm gonna need y'all bitches to move something. Yeah, we gonna need this right here. Yeah, I don't know who you think you talking to, bitch. So Beast kind of rub his chin and laugh a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he just knocked blood and everything out of Queen Sugar. And then the rest of his boys that he just fucking recruited gets on the whole Queen team and they demolish him and Beast hitting motherfuckers with one punch, knocking motherfuckers out. So after they finish stomping they ass out, he picked one of the Queen team members up and damn near threw that motherfucker to the bench in the front of that. And he's still stomping motherfuckers on the ground. Now after he did all this, this nigga sat on the motherfucking middle bench like ain't nothing fucking never happened. So my whole crew say, hey, man, let's go to your cell, man. Let's go chill in your cell. And see, I got an old dude in my cell with two other dudes. You know what I'm saying? They be cool with the situation. They don't fuck with nobody. You know what I'm saying? They don't even participate in most of the shit that be going on in the prison. They bought their business, but they just don't get involved. So we all goes to my cell and we sitting around that bitch like, bro, this nigga here just taking what the fuck he want. Now, a little bit later while we chilling in my cell, we hear some commotion break out on the top tier. So we come out and we see Nate and about three other dudes talking to TJ. They really arguing with TJ and TJ's just stuttering, ain't really saying too much. And without even thinking, Doc breaks and runs up there and we break and run after Doc. So Doc get up there and he get to telling Nate, hey man, don't do this little dude nothing, bro. Man, this little dude just got an ass beating out this fucking world by two inmates, man. You know, and Doc not even paying attention. I look down and Beast looking the fuck directly at us. We done drew his attention trying to save TJ. So they arguing and arguing, going back and forth, and they like, man, shit, I got to get some resolution to this problem, man, because I can't let this slide. So Doc tried to walk Nate off to talk to Nate and be stand the fuck up and say, man, let them niggas fight. Let them fight. And Doc about to say something to Beast, so I grabbed Doc and whisper in his ear, Say, man, let this one roll, bro. Let this one roll. We ain't ready to go up against this nigga yet, man. Let it roll. So I grab Doc, and we all walk back down. And as we walking down, they start beating TJ ass. And them other three dudes jump in, and they stomp the fuck out of TJ. And B's just standing on the motherfucking table looking up at him like, <laughs> big stupid ass. Ugly ass nigga. And Po TJ, he was already beat the fuck up and swole up from the last inmates that Sergeant Larry got to beat his ass. He up there right now, he bleeding out of knots. So as Nate and his boys walking back down the stairs, Beast tell him, that's how you do that shit. You stomp that bitch nigga. Yeah, y'all did that shit. Really trying to juice him up but they ain't paying attention. They thinking they done got some respect from Beast. Now, this old super scary ass nigga named Zeke, he go walk over there where Beast and him at and start telling Beast, hey, you see that nigga that just uh, beat that boy up? Sergeant Larry turned him and that boy out. So everybody just looking at Zeke give Beast the whole rundown of the whole prison. And needless to say, Zeke start hanging with them. Now, Zeke, he's in detail. He worked with, on workforce in close proximity to us. And he's right over there with Laco at. So me and my boys, we all go head back to my cell and we discussing Zeke, you know, whether we gonna get him at uh, workforce or not. Cause he done pulled some whole ass shit and when just gave this man the whole layout, the who is who, he pointing at people. You can see everything that Zeke doing from my cell. Okay, so... When we come back, and I'm not going to leave you guys hanging today, I'm going I'm to pound out some episodes, you know what I'm saying? Because I really want to get down to the nitty-gritty of all this shit that happened with Beast because it, it broke out real fast. Shit went into a fucking full-on war fast. So I'll see y'all soon today.